Hi, everybody. Welcome back. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. Wow, the sun is coming in that window so bright this afternoon. I actually am so thankful, but wow, it's so bright. I'm not used to the brightness. It's been so dark and gloomy here. And uh, the last several days, we've had sunshine, and I'm just so thankful. Today, I'm going to walk you through how to make the cross wall hanging. Isn't that so pretty? Aren't those colors just so pretty? I'm excited to see the colors that you choose. Uh, but yeah, today we're going to make this. Now this is um, a pattern that I made from a painting that I did. I did a couple of them. But the date on the back of this picture is April 10th, 2012. So how many years ago was that? I can't even do the math that quick. <laughs> but that's a picture of the painting, my original painting, uh, that I went by when I designed this pattern and then I did another one from my brother and his wife when they got married but isn't that so pretty so this is a very close representation re representation <laughs> to a painting that I did a long time ago and I am so glad to share it with you we're gonna dive in this is raw edge applique y'all uh, I dare say that well, if you have a cutting machine, you could do it really quickly. The cutting files are included with the pattern. But even if you're cutting out with scissors by hand, it's all very straight and easy cuts. So yeah, super simple. I would say even a, bit, a beginner could do this pattern and I'm excited to share this with you. So who's ready to get started? Let's go. So let's get started by taking a look at this pattern. Isn't this so pretty? And the awesome thing about this pattern is it is very scrap friendly and fat quarter friendly. So to do all of the different colors, if you wanted to use this many colors, each one of the colors, you would only need one fat quarter and you're only going to use a part of a fat quarter. So um, very fat quarter and scrap friendly. So let's just take a look at this because uh, I designed this with this colorway in mind and you could certainly uh, judge your colors and your fabrics by looking at the different color swatches here and the layout here. And you'll notice that I've labeled each one of these colors A, B, C, all the way through G, right? And right next to it, it tells you how many uh, patches of this color are in this design. Now, like with every pattern, you could certainly use the colors I've suggested in the places I've suggested, or you could totally choose your own colors and you could make all of the backgrounds the same exact color or only use two or three. You don't have to use this many different colors and you don't have to put them where I've put them. But if you like the layout of what I've done here, uh, then wherever you see A on the pattern, that's where you would use that color. Wherever you see B on the pattern, that's where you would use the color that you've chosen for that place, right? And so on. So um, that's what all of the letters mean. And there's a guide of colors that I've used. Now today, I'm going to go totally... <laughs> not these colors and I'm going to choose some different colors from some fat quarters that I bought at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival. So I will not be using these colors and you'll get an idea of what it'll look like if you swap out the colors. Now I will be using the same placements so where everything I will label my different colors with these letters and everywhere where there's an A I will use my fabric that I've chosen for A and just swap those out, but I'll still use the same exact placement. Now this project is gonna measure 15 by 20, uh, which is a perfect wall size quilt, and um, it's all raw edge applique. So uh, yeah, if you love raw edge applique, you're gonna have so much fun with this. So you're gonna start with a background fabric, and I'm choosing a black background fabric and uh, I'm making it a little bit bigger than the 15 by 20. So you do have some instructions, uh, the layout for your pattern, how to tape that together, 
and uh, all of the different placements for your fabrics. And some instructions. <laughs> and then there are four pages that you are going to glue or tape together, right? So there is a fine dotted line on all of your pages. That is where you're going to line up your pattern right on that line. So for some of them, I will cut everything off up to that line and some of them I will leave that bit on so that I can line them up perfectly on that line and have a little gluing uh, tab right there. So let's go ahead and put this together. I'm going to fast forward this section because many of you know how I like to uh, glue and prep my larger patterns. But if you want to see this in actual time, did you know that you can actually slow down YouTube videos? In the settings right underneath of the YouTube video, there's a setting where you can slow down or speed up YouTube videos. So that's helpful. Go ahead and slow it down if you need to. And our pattern is coming together. Now here we are with our pattern all taped or glued together, right? It doesn't all fit in the screen, uh, but a good size little wall quilt, right? So at this point, you're ready to start tracing each one of these different sections onto your favorite fusible. And today I'm going to be using Heat and Bond Light. That's my favorite fusible. And working with Heat and Bond Light, uh, all of these templates are right side facing up, right? Our cross quilt is going to look just like this when we look at it. Therefore, we need the mirror image of this pattern and all of these pieces in order to trace with our fusible. To keep this pattern as a few pages as I possibly could, I did not mirror image the tracing templates. So you're going to actually use this pattern from the back side to trace all of the different positions, right? And you can use a window, you can use a light pad, uh, any way that's going to help you see through that paper onto your fusible to trace each one of the different sections. Okay. Uh, you're going to go ahead and trace that. And then that's going to give you all of the fusible to bond to or diffuse to the backside of each one of the different fabrics for each one of the different placements, right? Now, with this pattern, I did create a cutting file. So there's two different zip files that come with this pattern. There's one for Cricut users, and there's one for Scan and Cut users, and they're formatted differently for those machines. Each one is a zip file. So if you have a Cricut, download the zip file, and when you open that file, you're going to have several different, you're going to have A through G files in that zip file. So if you are ready to cut out your A pieces, you would then open the A file and import that to your cutting machine. And you have all of the A sections in this pattern, the cutting file for that. When you're done with all of the A pieces, you'll close that file and import the B file. And in the B file is all of the B sections, right? I've grouped them together based on... Uh, how I've broken them down into the pattern. Same with the scan and cut. The scan and cut file, once you unzip it, uh, you'll have access to all of the different pieces sorted out by letter. Okay, I am gonna actually use my cutting machine and the SVG file, and I'll just bring you along for part of that. And uh, we will cut out all of the fabric pieces for each one of these placements. So I thought I would show you because look how pretty these are. <laughs> these are only some of the fat quarters that I bought at the Mid-Atlantic Quilt Festival and I wanted to show these to you. Now just to let you know I'm not affiliated with uh, Sherry Wood. Uh, I just love their fabrics, right? They had a whole great big humongous table 
filled with all of these hand dyed fabrics and I just could not resist myself. <laughs> And actually I bought one fat quarter bundle and then a whole bunch of these uh, separates, right? And it says they have 200 colors to choose from. They are gorgeous. I fell in love with them. But let's just learn a little bit more about them because I thought it would be great to share some information about them. Uh, they're 100% uh, cotton. They have 44 inch wide fabric as well. It's a high thread count, pre-wash, pre-shrunk. Uh, there's no right or wrong side to these. Uh, they showcase quilt stitches. That uh, should be interesting, right? And they're dyed in Minnesota, which I thought was awesome. And uh, there is a wholesale option available if you are uh, looking for wholesale. Uh, yeah, hand dyed. Isn't that awesome? Uh, the appearance that looks like suede, and it really does. Like, it's hard to capture that on this webcam, but it absolutely does. And I love the way it feels. So these are the fabrics that I'm going to use. They're all the hand-dyed ones. And then I thought for the cross itself, because I really want some contrast there. And uh, I'm going to use one of these, which is uh, pinwheels. And uh, I got several of these at the Mid-Atlantic mid-atlantic quilt festival as well and i believe these are japanese fabrics this is a lolly pack and each one of these are 10 by 13 so it's not quite a fat quarter but each one 10 by 13 is going to be exactly enough if i just like use this one right here for my cross that's going to be plenty big and i'll even have a little piece left over so i thought i would use this for the actual cross itself uh, section in my quilt so if you're interested in learning more about these pinwheels, I didn't even bring the other ones over. I just grabbed the ones I'm using. I got several of these too, but www.pinwheels.com. They have these gorgeous fabrics and they have little textures to them too, which you know I'm all about some textured fabrics, right? And uh, if you're interested in these hand dyed fabrics from Minnesota, you can go to www cherrywoodsfabrics.com I'm going to put that there because they do have a phone number as well so jot that down if you want to give them a call and there's their website you can go check them out they have 200 colors they do have information and care information for taking care of your fabrics so yeah that's what I'm going to use now I'm not so much worried about all this because this is going to be an art quilt <laughs> I don't plan on washing it so uh, I don't think that I'm going to be worried about the uh, really special care instructions with the hand dyed fabrics this is going on my wall so but yeah if you might want to pay attention to that if you plan on washing your quilt okay so there we go there's some fabric goodness for today i'm going to go ahead and start pulling up the cutting files and fusing some heat and bond light to the back sides of these and we're going to start cutting again i'm going to fast forward through this part because i just really want you to get the idea of the different steps so this golden color fabric is the fabric I'm choosing for all of the A sections in my pattern. So I gave the fabric a press. I've pressed the heat and bond on the back side and applied it to my cutting mat. Then I've sent over the A file, which has all of the A pieces. And I'm gonna scan my fabric and make sure that all the pieces fit right onto my fabric. And then I'm gonna go through and it's gonna cut all of the A sections, all of those pieces out for me. And I'll follow these steps for all of the different pieces, A through G. It cuts them out perfectly. And then I'm just going to remove, I did use a little bit of tape to keep the fabric on the mat. This is the standard cutting mat with the purple little frame at the bottom. <laughs> And now I can just weed out the extra fabric and paper. I'm going to label in little Ziploc bags all of my pieces so I don't get mixed up. Just help me stay a little organized. 
take those pieces off the mat and put them in my little Ziploc. And I'm gonna repeat this process for each one of the different letters. Now that we have all of the different pieces cut out for all of our different fabrics, we have those all cut out and sorted. Now we're gonna look at different ways to transfer our pattern onto our black background. Now, of course, you could use a window to do this. There are several different ways. So I wanna just to give you a couple of ideas, right? So either using a light pad or a window, you could use all kinds of different markers to mark each one of the placements, right? So this is a clover water soluble pencil and this just removes with water. And then you have, I think this is the Dritz uh, chalk marker, right? This is what I usually use. <laughs> and then uh, I just shaved off a piece of soap and this works too. And I probably wouldn't use this if you don't plan on washing your quilt because this will probably stay on and be harder to remove once you're all done if you're not washing your quilt. If you're gonna wash your quilt, this is excellent to use, okay? So we're just gonna use part of this pattern just for this part of the demonstration. But of course you would have the whole four pages and you would pin it right to the back of your black background fabric, right? So that when you move everything, your pattern's not going to shift underneath your fabric. So just throw some pins in there and hold these pieces together. And all you're gonna do is start tracing each one of these uh, placements. The best way that you can. And I tend to do short strokes because dragging the chalk or, or the pencil tends to uh, pinch up the fabric a little bit. So short strokes usually work really well for me. So that's using the water soluble uh, pencil, which is actually pink. They have a blue one and a white one. They all work the same. You can even put uh, the little letters inside the boxes, right? You're just going to trace each one of these different sections to give yourself a guide to place the applique in each different section. So there's the chalk and then let's try the soap out. Of course, I didn't cut it with a very good <laughs> thin little tip. So it's a little wide of a stroke on there. There we go. So there's each one of those different marking uh, utensils just like that. Now, I also wanted to show you one other thing. And before you start tracing all of your uh, different placement sections. If you bring your pages over to the sewing machine and do not load any top or bobbin thread and you poke holes with your sewing machine in each one of these different sections, uh, that would give yourself a great little template to use with a pounce pad. So let me just show you that in case you've never seen it. So all you're basically gonna do is just sew without any thread right on top of all of the lines of the different pieces. What this is gonna do is poke little tiny holes around each one of these different places. And we will use the pounce pad over top of these holes to transfer the entire boat pattern right onto the fabric. So here we are, we're just gonna take this black fabric and just turn it over 
and here is the template and it might be easier for you to work uh, just like this you know print off another copy another four pages of your pattern and sew them one at a time and then tape them together right it might be easier to move everything underneath the sewing machine but what that's done is create little holes just like this and we can place that right onto our black background once you've taped the four sections together and we can use a pounce pad right there's a, a pink one a blue one and a white one today I'm using my blue one you want to be really careful not to touch the iron to these chalks sometimes it sets the color <laughs> But this one uh, is a brush and wash off, right? So this is a water soluble chalk. And all we have to do, once you've poked all the holes, is just wipe our chalk right over top of our pattern. And this would be a super fast way, right? If you did the time to sew the little holes on your patterns one time, and you are making multiple of these quilts, uh, this would be a super fast way to transfer the pattern each time, right? So you move it up and there are your little lines just like that. Let's get rid of some of the extra chalk. And there are our lines for our pattern. So if you're doing it with the pounce pad and your little dotted lines, it might be easier to work with one of those small clover irons just temporarily to right in the middle of the fabric just heat it up so it won't fall off right and do each one of your uh, fabrics right in the middle and then once they're bonded like that temporarily brush off your chalk and then fully iron all of your pieces right so you're not accidentally setting any chalk on the black background that you don't want there so that's how I would do that, but there's a, just a couple different ways of transferring the design. Now I actually have a tempered glass top that goes on top of my new light pad. <laughs> so I'm not going to do any of those. I'm going to go get that glass top and um, pin my pattern to my background fabric and I can just work without transferring the pattern at all. So I'll bring you along as I do that. Now I truly don't think it would be a Lisa Cape and Quilt video without making some kind of boo-boo. <laughs> I realized that uh, I forgot to hit record and I had already started fusing my pieces but I most definitely wanted to bring you along. So we're picking up where I realized that uh, I didn't hit record. And I'm working uh, doing all of my same pieces so F will do all the F pieces A will do all the A pieces and so on but I have the tempered glass right over top of my light pad so I'm able to just fuse with my iron the pattern pieces right on top of my light pad which is super helpful and saves so much time not having to transfer all of the different placements to my black fabric so that was awesome and with my light pad, it doesn't really show up real good in the video, but I'm able to see right through that black fabric really easily. So I just have my pattern pinned to my black fabric and I'm able just to move everything right around until I use up all of my pieces. And once they're all fused on, I can remove the pins and the paper. And then I'm just going to bring this over to my pressing board and I give this a good final press. Isn't that so pretty? I love these cherry wood fabrics. They are gorgeous. Now we're ready to layer our quilt. Now that we have the top all fused together, we can go ahead and create the layers. I have the back fabric with the right side facing down. Today I'm actually using two layers of warm and natural batting because I want my quilt to be a little bit poofy, but you don't have to use two layers. And y'all, I'm actually using Elmer's wet glue. It's a liquid glue 
uh, the Elmer's glue all actually. And this does wash out of your quilt if you ever decide to wash your quilt. Um, and I will be drying all of this glue with a good hot iron. So we're not bringing any wet glue over to the sewing machine. But yeah, I'm going to wet glue based all of my layers with the top right in the center. And I have a little bit of extra backing and batting all the way around. Once the glue is totally dry, I'm ready to bring my quilt over to the sewing machine. Now today I've decided to put on my free motion foot and just stitch right within each one of the shapes to quilt and stitch down my applique. Very simple quilting. But y'all, there are all kinds of different things that you can do. You could do a blanket stitch. That would be amazing. Like if I wasn't pressed for time, I would most definitely probably do a blanket stitch. And I do think it would take quite a bit longer to stitch down the pieces, but wow, it would be so worth it. The free motion stitch for me is just the fastest way to stitch down my pieces and get this quilt quilted. And I actually do like the results of doing the free motion stitch as well. It's very simple and just a basic quilting. It provides uh, the plumpiness that I'm looking for with the two layers of batting. And uh, yeah, I really like that. But yeah, you could do a zigzag stitch, a blanket stitch, decorative stitches. Uh, the good thing about the free motion stitch is that I can work in all directions pretty easily without having to rotate the quilt quite as much. And you'll see me rotate it here and there uh, just so I have an easier way of going in one direction. I have a little bit of a hard time doing straight lines, exactly straight with a free motion stitch. But I think for not doing this uh, very often here lately, I did a pretty good job. <laughs> I'm using a bottom line in both the top and the bobbin and bottom line is a really really thin like quilting thread. I think it's 60 weight don't don't quote me on that but I think it's a 60 weight and it's very thin and doesn't show up too too much and I chose a black thread so just in case I go off my fabric into the black background uh, it won't be so so noticeable and I just thought I'd bring it along because sometimes it's just really fun to watch somebody do the quilting on their quilts and I'm gonna have a ton of jump stitches to trim once I'm done with all the quilting but yeah I'm gonna show this whole process since I remembered to turn on the record button <laughs> And you can just watch as I finish stitching down and quilting the rest of the pieces. Now hopefully I didn't lose your interest or you have fast forwarded. <laughs> I 
but we are coming down towards the end and I had so much fun it's been a while since I did some free motion stitching and every time I do it I just want to do more and more of it I will probably end up making a couple of these quilts so I'll get more stitching time in so once the quilt is all quilted we can go ahead and square it up now you'll see I have extra black fabric all the way around. The pattern doesn't actually call for that, but sometimes I just like to allow myself a little bit of extra. And the pattern pieces are actually uh, supposed to go to the very edge, but I'm gonna leave just a smidgen of fabric, not even quarter of an inch of black around my pieces as I'm squaring up all of the batting and the back fabric. And that's to allow a little bit of that black fabric to eat up some of the binding space so the binding doesn't go too much over top of my pieces. So you'll square up your quilts and then you're ready for a binding. Now isn't that so pretty? Here's the back with all the quilting. Even my wonky lines from here look perfect. <laughs> and here is my final quilt after I did the binding. Don't you think that that is just so pretty? If you make this quilt, I would love to see yours. Make sure to share pictures over on the Creative Crew on Facebook. There's a link down in the description box to join us there if you haven't already. Okay, everybody, I hope you have fun with this. I'll see you really soon. Bye. Bye.